Now let's have a quick uh, look at endgame table bases in Fritz 13. Now if you've uh, ever used endgame table bases before you'll know a little bit about what they are. They're actually uh, basically massive databases that allows the computer, the computer chess engine, to play perfectly um, a number of computer chess endgames. And uh, there's a variety of different ways to get hold of these endgame table bases. They've basically um, they've created endgame table bases for all three piece endings, four piece endings, five piece endings, and six piece endings. They're actually moving into uh, a few seven piece endings now as well. Uh, and of course, when I say seven piece endings, I'm counting the king. So it starts at three piece endings because. You need to start with both kings. Both kings count as a piece. Um, but the thing is with the, these t endgame table bases, uh, when you get to the sort of five, six, and even seven uh, piece endings, they're absolutely huge files, absolutely huge. Um, you can download them off the internet for free. That's absolutely fine. That's all legal. But uh, you would need to have an incredibly fast broadband uh, and connection. And even then, it's going to take you days and days to download all the six piece and some of the seven piece, and you'll need a huge amount of storage. I'm told that all the six pieces, um, everything leading up to the six piece endings, you're looking at about one terabyte of storage. Which, uh, if you don't know what a terabyte is, it's a lot. It's basically a thousand gigabytes or a million megabytes. The old floppy disks that they used to have in the 1990s were 1.4 megabyte. You'd need uh, goodness knows how many of those. Something like, uh, well, I guess. Uh, a million floppy disks to fit all the table bases onto them. Uh, anyway, so you can get those, you can also purchase them from Chessbase. Chessbase do a package called the Turbo Bases, um, which gives you all the five piece and some of the six piece uh, endings. But even that, um, without even going to all of the six pieces, takes up nine separate DVDs. That's a lot of space, and it's over 40 gigabytes of space. So. Again, you're still going to need a lot of uh, space to do that, to save it to your computer hard drive. Anyway, I have managed to do that. I've copied them all over from the uh, Fritz Turbo bases available from Chessbase. Uh, I'm not going to walk you through that in the video because um, it does take a couple of hours, but it's a pretty simple process. You literally just put the disks in, start the install process, but you have to put one disk in after another, and I say there's nine disks, and each of them takes quite a while to copy the stuff over. But they do copy it all over to a certain directory, and uh, I'll show you how to connect those to your Fritz now. What you need to do is you need to go into the Options window. So if you click on File here, the top left, and go down to Options, this brings up, and actually you can see I've clicked on this already, but if you're in something else, the one we're interested in is Table GUI or Table GUI, depending on uh, how you want to say it. So Table GUI, and um, that's the one we're interested in. And you can see there's four different boxes here, Path 1, Path 2, Path 3, and Path 4. Um, what those are, you basically need to put in the address or the, the path of the folder where you've stored the table bases. So you need to pay a little bit of attention when you're copying those table bases or installing them, where they get installed to. I, I mention this quite a lot. When you install stuff, you need to know where it's being installed to on your computer. That is to say, you need to know which folder, which directory these things are being stored to. Uh, but once you click on Browse, you can find that. You can store them in lots of different places, actually. And uh, I happen to know that uh, mine are in my Users folder. Uh, you can see Nick there. And then we've got my documents and chess base. A lot of things are stored directly to my documents and chess base, but I've saved it to a folder called table bases. You can see what I've actually got here is three different folders. So I'm going to fill in three of the paths here. That's all the four piece, all the five piece, and all the six piece. Actually, all the three pieces are in the four piece as well, but as there's not, not a great deal, they've just called it TB4. So that's what you should get uh, if you've installed the Fritz Turbo Base. As I say, there's about a 40, I think 40 plus gigabytes of stuff there. If I go down to TB6, you'll see, yeah, there's 33 gigabytes just there, uh, and the five, yeah, another five. So we're looking at around about 40 gigabytes of stuff there. So first one, we'll do TB4, place it in the first path, uh, and we've got to scroll through all those again, I'm afraid, uh, just to put these in. I mean, if all your table bases are in one folder, then you won't need to do this. You can just copy uh, that entire folder. I just have those split up. It's the way that uh, the turbo bases automatically do things. And uh, as you'll know, if you've seen any of my videos, I'm a stickler for going with what the default settings are. Um, I just find that, generally speaking, you, it uh, avoids any problems further on down. Uh, when a program's looking for something, it thinks is uh, installed somewhere, and you've moved it somewhere else. Anyway, so we've done that now. Uh, TB6, there we go. 
so you should be able to follow. You can see you can you can obviously just type those in if you want to, but uh, it's a little bit complicated. It's just easier to click browse. So I've got them all installed here, and you need to tick load at program start. Cache is something um, you don't need to worry too much about. Um, the help files you'll notice say something around eight. I tend to go for a little bit higher. If you've got a decent amount of memory in your computer, maybe go for somewhere 1632. And if you've got a great deal of memory, then maybe 64 as well. But um, really, don't worry. Don't get too uh, excited about that. Just hit it to some something like 1632 or 64, depending on how much memory you have in your computer. I've got eight gigabytes of memory in mine, so I'm going to stick with 32. But, um, but again, uh, there's no hard and fast rules with this. So uh, we've ticked load at program start and we're ready to go so we can simply click OK. Now as, as I understand this the table bases actually uh, you need to come out of Fritz and back into it to test them but we'll show you how to test them now so we might uh, they might work or they might not start with we might need to reboot but let's do that so we basically need to go to an ending position so I'm going to go to position setup clear the board and set up something pretty simple uh, we'll have a queen uh, queen versus rook, say, just to give us an idea of uh, of this working. Obviously, so that's four pieces we've got there. And um, if Fritz is accessing the table bases, it should give you an instant analysis of this position. But uh, as we haven't rebooted Fritz yet, it might not do that. Yeah, you can see here that basically this means the Fritz the table bases aren't activated because Fritz is analysing. If the table bases were working now, Fritz. Um, would basically just display all the results, but that's because, as I say, I ticked it, ticked load at program startup, but we need so we need to come out of Fritz and go back into it to access those table bases. You'll only need to do this once, uh, but once you've done it, you should be okay. So let's go back into Fritz. We've come out of it. You might notice Fritz takes a little bit longer to load up. It doesn't seem too bad, but uh, so let's go back into our position setup, uh, set up the old position again. I'll say just. Uh, something uh, a bit more traditional, something like queen versus rook, lone queen versus lone rook, that should be covered in our table bases. So if we hit infinite analysis now, and there you go, you can see the difference. Rather than, it act than Fritz actually going through an analysis of all the different positions, what you've got is an instant um, report of all the different possibilities in that position. So you can see at the moment we've got uh, the top move, which is mate in 27 for white, is uh, queen e8 check. That gives you mate in 27. Uh, that's basically perfect play. And if Fritz was analysing, it would take uh, hours, if not days, to work all this out. So you'll see by accessing the table bases, you've got instant response. If we scroll down, you can see you've got mates in 29, mates in 30. And actually, um, here we've got Q at queen f1. So if you play queen f1, obviously the rook can come down to c1. And uh, so you'll end up with uh, no mating material. It'll end up drawn. And if you play something uh, really stupid like Queen C4, just where the, the rook can take it, then obviously it becomes a, a mate uh, for black, a forced mate for black. Um, but that's really what the table bases are. They uh, let you see instantly um, what uh, the best moves are in an end game position. As I say, they take up a lot of space, so make sure you've got a lot of spare hard drive space. Or even better if you have them on, say, an external hard drive or, or flash drive, something like that. Uh, but they're really useful and uh, absolutely invaluable for end game uh, analysis and play. Really good for training uh, how to do perfect end games. Okay, well, there you go. That's a little bit of a walkthrough on how to install the end game table bases in Fritz 13.